Hello Utah students, I'm Quinn Snyder, head coach of the Utah Jazz. February is Black History Month. Our team is excited to talk with you about the people and events that have inspired us. Let's learn about our Black History heroes. Hello everyone, we are back with another episode of Black History Heroes. I am joined by head coach Quinn Snyder, who has chosen a true basketball legend, both on the court and a legend just in general off the court. Um, Coach, can you tell me who your Black History hero is? It's uh, my hero is Bill Russell. And growing up in Seattle, um, in the mid 70s, Bill Russell we came to Seattle as a, a player coach. And I think most of us who know Bill Russell and his, you know, his athletic career associate him with, with the Celtics and rightly so. That's where, you know, he won, you know, two hands full of NBA championships and was a maverick in many respects um, in his playing career. But for me, I became familiar with him when he moved to Seattle and I was a, a young guy, I think 10 years old and was watching the Sonics and, you know, was aware of who he was. And in fact, um, he actually lived not too close to me, but close enough that um, when I was walking to, to a buddy's house during the summertime, I would walk by his house and um, kind of try to peer through the fence and see if he was around and, and never actually saw him, but it's something that, that uh, he's aware of now because okay. I had a chance to tell him. I was about to say, did you ever get to have that conversation with him about it, that? It, a brief one. Yeah. It always was one of those ones where you, I, I didn't quite know how to pose it. Like it felt like I was telling him I used to jump his fence and cut through his yard. Um, but you know, when he was, when he was playing in Boston, there were things that, that uh, we all know about the success and, you know, for the young people watching this and, and, and conversing with us, players and staff, I, I think to, to get an idea of the type of player Bill Russell was, is he was on the level of someone now like LeBron James. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think, you know, many of the, the NBA superstars that we're familiar with now, you know, look to Bill Russell as a mentor, um, not just because he won, you know, he was, historic in, in, in his ability to bring championships to Boston, um, but also the things that he did off the court. And when you talk about, you know, athletes using their platform or speaking out against certain things, he, he lived that uh, in a very real way, um, was a big supporter of the civil rights movement, uh, the Voting Rights Act, you know, two pieces of legislation that, that, uh, that were passed in the 60s that you know, I'm confident and hopeful that that everybody will continue to learn about in detail because I, those things obviously um, have shaped lives, you know, for decades now. And we're still fighting some of those same battles that people fought for then. And Bill Russell did. In fact, uh, there's a famous uh, story when he was playing with the Celtics and their team was in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, they were denied access to a restaurant. I mean, that was a time literally when we had um, separate but equal laws mm -hmm. and his teammates in support of him and the other black players on their team uh, decided to boycott the game the next day uh, and you know we can look at that and say that was a long time ago it really wasn't that long ago and you know he was a man that not only stood for selflessness and team and winning and self-sacrifice you know on the basketball court but he stood for those same things in his personal life and with his political beliefs. Definitely, and, and when you think of Bill Russell, um, you, of course, you know, like you said, you think of all the things that he's been able to win, um, but at the same time, he fought for the injustices that are currently going on in the society, even back then. Um, and so my question to you as a coach, how has his, how has his life um, in many ways inspired you on how you treat and how, um, how you are able to, to work with your players as a coach? It's a good question. And, and I think the, the, you know, early on he was, he was a player and, but his relationship with his coach, uh, Red Arbach um, is a famous one. Uh, Red Arbach is a, a white coach. Um, here's Bill Russell, really the first great player acknowledged for great, great African-American player. Uh, in the NBA from the standpoint that he won championships and became, you know, very well known. Their relationship as a player and a coach 
was a unique one because Coach Arbach really stood by him um, in all the things that he believed uh, off the court. And, you know, then you see this evolution of Bill Russell's career from a player to a player coach and then a coach. Mm -hmm. And it always struck me um, that that path that he took ended up him being a coach. And I think he's continued to be a coach, you know, even though he's not on the sidelines, I think the example and the decisions he's made and the advice that he's given um, to current players and to current coaches um, is something that, that, that we can live by, Um, you know, so really his values, you know, and they manifested themselves both in his playing, you know, and his coaching. And those are things to me, um, as far as dealing with, with our players, I think, you know, to always try to be sensitive and compassionate to their feelings and beliefs, to understand that we we're all different. We all have different experiences. And to the extent that we're able to put, put, put ourselves in one another's shoes, that, that not only helps us um, in, in a team situation, it helps us to interact personally, but it really enriches our lives, you know, to learn about each other. Um, and as, as far as a team goes, those are the essential components of a team. Mm-hmm. A team that doesn't have that connection, that compassion, um, and that closeness, you know, isn't going to be a very good team. And he embodied that, you know, in every aspect of his life. And it was most visible, obviously, when he was playing on the court and the things that he did. I tell Rudy Gobert all the time, Bill Russell's your idol. He's got, you know, I remember 11 rings and he was the defensive player of the year many times. So he's someone that, that I've talked to Rudy about. 11 rings, five MVPs. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, but one thing that you mentioned earlier was just the fact that he was fighting in the 60s. And that was a time where um, there wasn't as much support. I mean, he, he got it from his teammates and he got it from his coach. But how does his courage and bravery inspire you? Well, I think that's the, the word is courage. And I think when you look back and you see, you see the, you know, the things that were going on in the country then you see some of those same things, many of those same things that are happening in, um, in different ways, but, but similar in many respects and his ability to stand for things that he believed in um, and also to do it in a very thoughtful way. You know, th- this was something, this is a man um, and you can still hear, it, you know, when, when he speaks, he's someone I would love to get him to come speak to our team because I think the wisdom uh, th- with which he's, you know, dealt with social issues, social justice issues, and really a calming uh, voice of integrity and one that, you know, regardless of color, race, creed, someone that that we can all respect and listen to and and hear his, um, how well, how well educated he is on many of the things that he believes. And I think that's something that, that really jumps out um, is his ability and willingness um, to educate himself and then have an opportunity to, to help us. Perfect. Thank you so much, coach. I can't okay. wait for the next generation to be able to look at this and, and learn something from the life of Bill Russell. So thank, so thank you for sharing your black history hero. Thank you. And thanks everybody for, for listening and sharing. And uh, hopefully this has been something that, that everybody can benefit from. Cause I know myself and the players really have. Welcome back to another segment of Black History Heroes. We are here joined by Utah Jazz player Mia Oni, who has chosen a Black History Hero that I absolutely love. Now, I've I've said that a few times now, but I absolutely love this lady. Mia, can you share who your Black History Hero is? Uh, My Black History Month hero is Michelle Obama. Okay, why did you choose Michelle? I chose Michelle because Michelle has been a great leader in the black community, the American community. And she was obviously the first black first lady of the United States, but she just represented so much more to the country, to black people, to black women. And I think she's just such an important figure in our history. Can you just talk to me about just the importance of representation um, with Michelle Obama being the first lady, but also the first black woman as the first lady of the United States of America. Yeah, it's extremely important. I mean, 2008, you go back 40 years from then, and and that's around the time where women, black women, were able to 
vote in our country and to fast forward from that from then and get into Michelle Obama being able to start initiatives to be the first lady, but also be an extremely educated black woman, graduate from Princeton and Harvard, not so long ago after women couldn't even attend the same schools as men, women didn't have the same opportunity and especially not black women. So just for her as a figure representation for younger girls, younger black girls to see that I can do that too. I wanna to be like Michelle Obama, her releasing her book and just being able to be a presence in the, in the community is just amazing. Um, so you, you, know, you mentioned her educational background. Uh, she attended two Ivy Leagues and you being someone that also, well, she attended and graduated from two, two Ivy Leagues, um, but you being someone that also attended an Ivy League, what does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, I know it's extremely difficult and I admire her for that. And just to be able to stick through process, go to law school as well, just, and I know how rigorous they can be, especially Princeton and Harvard are extremely rigorous. And for her to be able to do that as a black woman from the South side of Chicago, it just speaks to her determination and her will to be successful. When you look at um, Michelle's, legacy and what she was able to do in the White House. She was way more than just a first lady. Um, you mentioned it before, she was able to launch a bunch of different initiatives. Um, what initiative or what is something that really kind of spoke to you that Michelle has been able to do uh, with her career in the White House and then even after? Um, just be able to really inspire people through a lot of the initiatives and really help people and reach the lower base of the community, not just not just being inaccessible, but she was really accessible and started the Let's Move initiative. She helped in homeless shelters and really focused on bringing people at the bottom up. She didn't just leave the people at the bottom alone. She really focused on bringing them up. So I think that's something that's really admirable about her. And I think that's why she has so many followers and fans and people that look up to her and really respect her because she was able to act gracefully and try to help the people that need help the most. Michelle Obama uh, is still quite active in the fight for change today. Uh, how do you want this next generation to continue to carry out her legacy and also just one thing that you want them to, to really know about her? Um, just to watch her determination and how she carried herself on an everyday basis that she never got too high or too low. She really just stayed steady. A lot of criticism was thrown at her from different angles, people trying to bring her down and she really never played into it. And she just always went high when people went low. So I think that's the main thing. Cause if she did go low one time, then she would have been, people would have attacked her even more and she would have been remembered for that. But she's just remembered for all the good things that she's done and that she's still doing. And obviously her, her book is legendary and so many people should, everyone should read her book and so many people have read it. It means it's done a lot of wonders for people in my family who've read it and everyone that's really been able to hear what she has to say, hear her story. And it's really inspiring because it's like, she's a, she represents a very, very tiny percentage of people who can come from where she came and do the things she did. I mean, it's just really inspiring and it lets people know that they have a chance and they have there's a way out. It's not just, it doesn't have to be through music or sports or anything, but I can be the first lady or I can be even the president. I can be the vice president. I can do whatever because I see that Michelle Obama did it and she's inspiring. So I think she's just an important figure in, in general and she's one of a kind. Perfect, yes. Her book, Becoming, you all can go and get that as well as a documentary that is on Netflix called Becoming. Thank you so much, Mie, for sharing your Black History Hero and sharing First Lady Michelle Obama with us. All right, thank you guys, appreciate it. Okay, we are back with another edition and we are joined by assistant coach Lamar Skeeter who has chosen someone that is a journalist, activist, educator, um, a man that truly fought for equality, especially when it comes to education. Lamar, can you tell the students and everyone watching who your black history hero is? Yeah, it's uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, you know, like you said, activist, teacher, um, you know, somebody that really fought for uh, equality and education and employment. Uh, one of the original founders of the 
NAACP. Um, so really, really inspired me. Uh, you know, he was a teacher at a school called Weber Forest University, uh, which is about 20 minutes from where I grew up. Uh, so it was a little close to home. But I just loved it that he fought for, you know, advanced education. Um, you know, being able to go to college like I have and, and you know, some of those doors that are, were open for me um, were, you know, part because of him. So you're saying, um, so he taught at a school that was near you. So what was your first introduction to WEB? Um, I can't remember how old I was. I was young. Um, and, you know, you, you kind of get introduced to, to different heroes. You know, the list is so long. There's so many people that have, you know, had a huge impact on, you know, the culture and society. Um, you know, but he was a name that, you know, I remember reading, a, I, just, I remember what the cover of the book looks like too. I was reading a book when I was younger um, and really trying to get a, a good feel for, you know, what he believed in and, you know, how, what he did impacted my life. Um, and, you know, the equality in education and, and employment was a big one for me. Um, so that was, you know, that was, I can't, I wish I could remember how old I was because I was probably younger than you would think um, learning about him. But, you know, that just had, he's always been, you know, on the front of my mind uh, ever since I was a child. Can you kind of just explain like some of his accomplishments um, to those that may not know who he is? You no, know, he was an activist. He was an educator. Um, you know, I mentioned one of the founders of the NAACP. Um, you know, he was the, the first African-American to get a doctorate from Harvard University. Um, you know, he did so many things and, you know, he touched on, you know, ignorance in America. One of my favorite quotes I'll, I'll never forget said, um, you know, ignorance will be the fall of America if America doesn't destroy it or, or something along those lines. I may not <laughs> quote it verbatim, but um, and basically meaning, you know, ignorance will kind of destroy our society and our country um, unless we fight against it. And so I think education is the best way to fight against it and, you know, the advancement of education and not just in the classroom, but also in society, you know, you, you learn what's in the books and then it's also good to learn like who your neighbor is and, you know, what their story is and what their beliefs are um, really just having an open mind so that we can all work towards, you know, eliminating ignorance. Um, one thing that was truly special about WEB was that was his fight for education. Um, it was something, it was in many ways, it was a new age of thinking then. Um, it was controversial for some, but what does that mean for you? You mentioned that education and employment were something that you were truly passionate about. Can you kind of just talk to me about that and what that means to you? Yeah, you know, it's, um, there was a term he used, it's called a double consciousness, um, I yes. believe. But basically, you know, when, you, when you're young and you kind of have to see the world through your lens. Um, and I think, you know, especially back in, in those days, like it was easy for people to kind of see the world and society's lenses. Um, so, you know, as a young African-American student, you know, you're kind of, there's, there's a perception that, you know, you're not, maybe you're not as smart or not as educated or you don't work hard. Um, I think it's important to kind of put that aside and say no like I'm going to see the world how I want to see it if I want to study like I'm going to study and if I believe I'm smart then I'm smart um, you know he really fought for that and you know for myself as a student you know I worked hard you know in the classroom sports you know whatever it was um, and I always felt like I was seeing the world through my eyes and not through the eyes of somebody that you know doesn't have expectations for me for sure what do you think like uh, when you think of WEB, he, he was the co-founder, you mentioned earlier, of the NAACP, um, which is still an organization that fights for our rights to this day. What does that mean to you to know that he started something so long ago that still continues to fight for, um, for our rights? It's, I, I'm here, I, I honestly believe I'm where I am today, you know, in part because of that. Um, you know, being able to, to graduate high school and kind of pick a college to go to and then um, you know, apply for different jobs and, and get the jobs that I wanted. Um, I believe that, you know, that's a big part of it. And, you know, he, you know, like many activists, you know, I think you're fighting 
for the future. Um, and you may not know what it looks like, um, but you keep fighting for it. And you know, one of the things I remember is like, I think he passed away the day before or two days before uh, Dr. King's speech. Um, and I, in my mind, I was like, man, that, that would have been so cool for him to see that um, and you know, kind of see his work has inspired you know, other people and other people are fighting um, and, you know, we're working together to kind of really achieve equality. Yeah, it was the day before the I Have a Dream speech. He was 95 years old, so he was able to see a lot. Um, yeah. But that is still kind of, it's just ironic. Yes. Go, <laughs> and then he passed that on to Martin Luther King, who was someone that we, you know, we continue to celebrate, but there are people that have paved the way before him. So yeah. that's great that you pointed that out. Um, just one last message to the high schoolers that are watching. Um, you can't speak for W.E.B. Du Bois, but what do you think his message in 2021 would be, especially pertaining to education? Um, I guess just simple, educate yourself. Um, and that can mean so many things. You know, obviously what you're learning in school is really important and, and studying um, books, no matter what the subject is, like read books um, as much as you can, but also educate yourself on what's going on in the world. Um, like I mentioned you know, before, like educate yourself on your neighbor, um, you know, learn, and they may believe something different than you, but learn why they believe that, um, you know, and really spend the time educating yourself. So, you know, as you grow older, you can, you know, make decisions and choices that are um, backed by, you know, information that you've gathered. Um, I, I don't think you should never stop learning. Um, even me, you know, I graduated school, I'm done with school, but I'm always, you know, trying to learn, uh, whether it's work related, school related, um, socially related, you know, the, the more we can learn and, and inform ourselves, you know, the better off I think we'll be as a people. Definitely. And I know I said one last question, but you made me think you, I mean, W.E.B. Du Bois was a black educator. Talk about the importance yeah. of celebrating black educators. Yeah. Uh, I think it's huge, you know, for, for myself, especially being an African-American student, um, seeing that and, you know, along, and he wasn't just the only one, but seeing that and seeing those people pave the way, um, it allowed me to, to dream. And, you know, if they're doing this, if he's graduating, you know, getting a doctorate from Harvard university, like I know I can go to college and graduate college and, and go on to do more. Um, you know, I think it's important just for me and for everybody to see people that were, you know, kind of in a similar upbringing, to like see them go on and do these great, wonderful things. Um, and in this case, like it being education, like to see him get a doctorate from Harvard, like coming out of high school, I was like, man, I, you know, I can go to Harvard. I can go to, you know, Brown or, you know, one of these Ivy League schools. I can do that and have success with it because I've seen somebody else do it. Um, and I did not choose to go to an Ivy League, um, but I had, I had the option uh, and I think, you know, he is, he deserves all the credit for that. Thank you so much, Lamar, for sharing with us your Black History Hero. I truly appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, everyone, we are back with another edition of Black History Heroes, and I am here joined by Utah Jazz player Jarrell Brantley, who is from South Carolina, and he has now chosen a hometown hero in many ways. Can you tell me who your Black History Hero is. Yeah, I picked Matilda Evans. Um, she was she was the first Black woman to get her health um, certificate license. Um, and it plays an important role in my life just because my mom uh, was is big in healthcare. Um, and she did it for the kids. And it was back home. It's from South Carolina. So I recently just came across her on my own. And it's, it's kind of a beauty to see because I think in a, a lot of ways, um, she's you know, um, trailblazed the way for, for me. And I know we're fighting different battles and health is still an important issue um, in the world today. So it's beautiful to see that even back then, um, somebody like her that was a black woman um, fighting in those times, you know, kept, kept going. So um, it gives me light and inspires me um, in a lot of ways. Definitely. Okay, so you chose someone um, that you that a lot of people may not know, right? So mm -hmm. in the 1800s, she was advocating for healthcare for African Americans. Can you just speak um, to the importance of of just knowing that there are so many heroes out there, uh, Black history heroes that we may not read about in textbooks, but it's okay to do the research um, 
to find out who they are. Yeah, I think I think it's very important. Um, I think when you look back at Black history, it's not made up of one person. It's made up of the the whole community. Um, and I think in a lot of ways we're all heroes. Um, if if you're inspiring others, if you're trying to you know push towards the mark of being better, you're a hero. Um, so a lot of the people around me that I see every day are honestly heroes, and they're my heroes. So it's um it all comes back together. What's one thing um, when you when you were researching Matilda uh, that you learned that really impressed you? Um, it said that she like uh, adopted like seven kids and went on to take like nine plus more. So like she was more she was really hands on and she was she was walking the walk as much as she was talking to talk. So that's, you know, like I said, beautiful for me because, um, you know, even in my craft and, in, and what I want to do in my life, I have to be about what I say I'm about. Um, and she shows it right here right here um so it's it's amazing to see that she set this she set the trend for so many black people um and i never knew it um so it's beautiful perfect all right one last question uh talk to me about the importance of celebrating our history um it's important to know where we come from um in order to take the next step for generations um one day at a time one step at a time we got to continue to learn we got to continue to help each other and be understanding um there's going to be a lot of learning curves but if we continue to, you know, bring awareness to black history, um, who knows, the sky's the limit. So you just got to keep going. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing your hero, Matilda Evans, a trailblazer in healthcare for African-Americans and just a trailblazer in healthcare in general. So thank you, Jarrell, for uh, introducing us to Matilda. Thank you.